It is Thursday, September 24th, and you are watching Teal Talk, the show where twice a month we force experts from the digital content creation industry to talk to me for an hour, sharing their expertise with our audience. I'm your host, Jenny Guy, Director of Marketing for Mediavine, and someone who has yet to have an edible pumpkin spiced anything in 2020. This is criminal, and I feel like a failure. Um, it's fall or it's autumn. Which one do you guys say? I don't know. Um, fall. But fall, fall. I like to say fall is fallen, but I was told that sounded kind of fatalistic. So, you know, whatever. Uh, are you are you a fall or an autumn person? I have yet to. So I haven't had a pumpkin spiced anything, but I have lit up some very basic seasonal candles um, um. just to commemorate the season. Some, some apple stuff. So I, I feel like I'm in the mood. Um, but today I'm so excited. Everyone's saying they're so excited. I'm so excited. We are talking about something we either love to hate or hate to love. Long story short, our relationship with Instagram is complicated. And go ahead and guys, go ahead and kick us off right by telling us your favorite filter in the comments. Um, <laughs> but however we feel about Instagram personally, uh, we can say with certainty that a lot of brands that work with influencers love the gram. And it's a metric that uh, a lot of people ask about and pay attention to. And my guest today is an Instagram whisperer and is here to help you harness the powers of that platform for the good of your business. LaShawn Wiltz is the creator of Everyday Eye Candy, where she blogs about motherhood, simple solutions for moms like her, and her passion for capturing everyday moments through photography and Instagram. Based in Atlanta, Georgia, you can find LaShawn on Instagram, and we will share those links. <laughs> capturing the beauty in life's everyday moments, documenting her, her days as a wife and mom with half-finished coffee in one hand and her camera in the other. She is wonderful. We're so glad you're here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, so... Guys, sharing, if you're sharing filter or just sharing love for uh, LaShawn, either way, we will take both. <laughs> I want to kick off by learning a little more about you, LaShawn, your journey as a content creator and what brought you to Instagram and why you love the platform so much that you teach others about it. Well, it started off when I got my first iPhone. Mm -hmm. um, I was late. I was late to the iPhone yeah. game. Um, and <laughs> I got my first iPhone and I was like, oh, I can get on Instagram now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had, I was a new blogger at the time. I was just started blogging just because of my son. You know, I like to post pictures of him. It was an easy way to let my family, you know, follow along. Um, and I got on Instagram, you know, back then it was just cute filters. Uh, and you know, you, you just post it and it went out there in the world. You didn't worry about who saw it. You, it, it just went out there. Um, and somewhere along the way, it people started wanting to pay me to post these pictures. And I was yeah. like, oh, oh, okay. And it grew from there. Um, and I started randomly giving people advice. You, you know how yes. you, you, somebody asks you, well, what are you, what are you doing? And you say it. And they say, oh, that works for me. And you're like, oh, so it works for other people too. And it just kept going like that because I love Instagram. I love Instagram mainly because of the community. I've, I've been on there a long time now. My son is like in return 11, so at least eight years maybe. That's and awesome. so I have a large community on Instagram that is actually a community. And I've always said, if you want to succeed on Instagram, you have to build a community because that's, that's where it is. Um, and so I started teaching other people that, and then, um, people started asking me to talk about it. I was like, okay. <laughs> and it grew from there. Um, I think I love teaching about it because it's like one of those things that I can talk about in and not get bored. So that's why I started going ahead and talking more about it. I love that because that's a totally different approach than what a lot of people would say with Instagram. And I also think it's it, something that we always talk about on here is that you have that expertise that it's not something you think that you're necessarily an expert in. It's just something you're natural. Like you talk about it and people are like, whoa. And you go, oh, like it's, it. just, it's just what I do. I just like <laughs> yeah, it and it, I, you know, it happens. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people who are obsessed with it. You know, I, I, somebody posts about it. I, I'm like, ooh, what did you do? Did you do that? I'm always asking my friends, test this for me. <laughs> did you do this? So, yeah, I love it. That's awesome. I, I, and I love the idea of creating a community. So we're just going to jump right into the the elephant in the room, whatever you want to call it, whatever filter is on it. There's no doubt that the Instagram algorithm is the source of a whole lot of hand wringing and hair pulling amongst this influencer community. And it happens at least in part because we've all seen, I'm sure, what 
what Instagram popularity can do for your traffic and your work with your brands and your bottom line, really. It's a, it's a thing. So how do content cre creators get out of this grind of comparing stats? Um, and, and if you'd explain this by telling us, how does Instagram work? Okay, so the thing that everyone needs to understand about Instagram is Instagram has one goal, one goal, and that's to keep you on the app as long as possible. So whatever you do on Instagram to keep someone on the app, i.e. on your on your post or on your stories or on your video, Instagram will reward you for it because they're like, yes, that is all they want. Um, that's why video leads to more engagement. That's why stories and reels work because people fall down the rabbit hole and they just keep watching and clicking and scrolling. Um, and that's what Instagram wants. And so as long as you make content with that thought in mind, you'll succeed. That is extremely helpful. So another thing that I think a lot of people um, have talked about, especially amongst the influencer community in recent years is the buying followers and the pods and the giveaways mm. and the bots mm. and all of that. How, how do you feel about that type of thing in terms of, of buying followers versus or or giveaways or, or talk about that i know you've heard it we so another thing about the algorithm is all right this is pods were originally made the way pods were originally supposed to work where there's a, a group of accounts that were alike that had similar type of content they band together to help each other out because back then it used to be that if somebody gave you a like or a comment in the first 30 minutes after you post 15 to 30 minutes after you post it it would boost you in the algorithm it's not true anymore but that was the original thing about it. Um, but the way the algorithm really works is that when someone likes your post, Instagram not only shows that person more of your content, but it shows a teeny portion of their followers your content too. And because if they like it, they think their followers might like it. So what happens is when you have pods, it's the same people liking your stuff each and every time. So you never get any more impressions, any more reach than those people. And then Instagram stops showing your content because they're like, okay, it's the same people every time. It's the, the algorithm is smart. You cannot game it, even though people think they can. So that is, that's why pods, I always say, it's okay to have like personal pods where, you know, you know, you tell your friends, hey, I got a post up, you know, and there's some pods that are, you because of the algorithm, you might never see these people. If you have pods like that, where you're like, oh, friends, I posted something, you know, that fine but those pods those big pods where it's like thousands of people who they're a car account and you're a mom blogger that that does not mesh their followers won't care one bit about your baby at all they care about cars so you know things like that buying followers it's the same concept <laughs> these people don't know you they don't like you they like any and everything and they confuse the algorithm because the algorithm is like i don't know what they like so i don't know where to categorize you and giveaways, giveaways don't really work because, I mean, they, they give you more followers. That, I mean, in, a, in the short term, they work like that. But the problem is most of these people either leave after the giveaway is over or become dead weight because they never engage with the content. And Instagram wants people to engage with your content. And so that signals the algorithm that your content is trash and then they don't show it to anybody. So that's how I feel about it. <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, guys, I asked if anyone's out there. I'm the one who did this. I, I asked the question. Um, that's helpful. That's really helpful because 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 a lot of time, like we said, there's a lot of pressure to have these yeah. high numbers and to mm -hmm. engage. What, what would you say? Have, would you say that Instagram has really helped your work with with brands? Like you said, you were starting to get paid. Oh, like yeah. that's how it began. Yes, I can say right now about. 75% of my income comes from Instagram. And I always like to point that out because I'm like, I'm not huge. I am not like this big, big Instagrammer. You know what I mean? I have under 50,000 followers, but my I have, an engage, I have a core engaged audience. So if I put a link up from a brand that I trust and that they know I trust, they will, they will swipe up, you know, they will click on it. And Brands have figured that out. Sometimes you you have to show them, but they figured that out. So I always say, if I can do it with my side following, anybody should be able to. If you if you do what you're supposed to do. 
Okay, two questions, follow-ups. One, can you tell me about your, do you mind telling me how big you are? Two, uh, will you tell us you said sometimes you have to show them? Give us some tips on how you would show a brand, demonstrate that okay. type of, of selling power. So, like, I think I have 33,000 followers today. I, I, I know some 33 and some change. Lo loosely that, yes. Yeah, loosely that. So, but show, like, for instance, I had a brand come to me last week. And they, I told them what my rate was and they came mm -hmm. back and said, well, with a account of your size, usually this is what we pay. And I proceeded to, I took screenshots of my analytics of my last um, sponsored post that was like theirs, um, same kind of type of brand. And I, I showed them the back end. I was like, remember, Likes on Instagram are not the same anymore, but I'm going to show you my back end, how much reach that post got, how many impressions that post got, and on the story, how many swipe ups that got to the brand's link. And they were like, oh, okay, here you go. So I got my rate. So, yes. And that was something I learned from one of my friends. <laughs> so, But it worked. So I always say, do it. That's awesome. I love that. And I love that you kept negotiating with the brand and, and let them know yeah. that size doesn't matter. Okay. Not necessarily. It matters to a certain extent, but it's not the only thing. And like it's you said, likes, are, thing, likes yeah. are very different now. We're going to talk about that in a second, but what, yeah. what, how yeah. are likes different now? Let's likes just jump are in. different because you got to think about the fact that there are some countries in the world where likes are not a factor anymore. They took, they took them away. Um, and in the U.S., of course, we still have them. The majority of accounts, there are a couple that don't. But for the majority of the, of the world, there is no like. So you you got to think about that. And a lot of people don't hit like anymore. People are stingy with their likes now. Um, people are more likely to comment, actually, than they are to like. Because um, I know I forget to do it sometimes. Sometimes I forget to like, and then I have to go back and be like, oh, oh let me like this post. Um, yes, people, same, same. <laughs> so, and it's like, you'll see it, you'll laugh about it, you're engaged with it, you'll read all the other comments, you'll even like some of the other comments, but you won't like the post. Right. And that is just, the, that's how Instagram works these days. And so you always had to remind brands that that is how it goes. Sometimes they need education, so you just got to remind them. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, so why we cannot control the Instagram algorithm we're all about focusing on what we can control. So what should we focus on with our Instagram strategy now? You should focus on stories, reels, and your engagement, which we talked a little bit about. But those are the three things that you really need to focus on right now because that is what matters to Instagram. And that's what matters to brands, even though they they, they not to come out and say it, but that's what matters. You may have to tell them that that's what matters, but yeah. <laughs> but but that is what they should be looking in terms of what's going to give them the results, give them the return on their investment in working with you. It's that. So talk, let's start with stories because I, I love a good story. Okay. They're my favorite. So stories are Instagram's darling. It's the one thing they stole from Snapchat that they made their own that actually, you know, it's great. Everybody, people scroll this way now instead of this way first. I know there are some days where I get on and I might scroll my stories and get off. I yes, even look at my same. And I, <laughs> I know other people do the same thing mm -hmm. because stories are entertaining. You know, they keep us on the app, which is what Instagram loves. Um, they're personal. Um, it's like being a voyeur. I always tell my clients, you are the reality show. That is why people are watching. It's like a reality show on your phone that you can go to and come back to and keep watching. That's why a good story matters because you want to keep people engaged. Um, they help with that like no trust factor. Um, so once Say that again, get, talk, talk to us about like no trust factor. So when people like, know, and trust you, they're more likely to become your super fans and they're more likely to click your link. Um, they will always leave a comment. They will respond and heart every story. And when you ask them to buy something, they will buy it. That's what you want. They, they will swipe up and go to your newsletter. They will get off the app, which let me break and say that's what your ultimate goal should always be. Get them off the app because we don't own Instagram. Mark does. So get them off to something you will own. Okay, off my soapbox. No, but no, it's the truth. No, I love that. I love hearing that. And and the truth yeah. is, yeah, they don't own it. So so what you're doing is at odds with Instagram. So how do you balance that out? Because you said their goal is to keep people on the app. Your goal yes. is to get them off the app onto your own stuff. So how yes. do you balance that out? 
So you balance that out. That's part of like no trust factor because if they don't like, know, and trust you, which is what you do with stories, you get them, you let them in, you let them see the you behind the frame, you know, and everything. When she, once you do that, you can subtly direct them to, oh, if you want to know more about, you know, this meal I cook, you know, it's on my blog. And then they, you put a little swipe up or you say, go to the link in my profile, they'll go. Hopefully on your blog, you have something where they can sign up for your email list. And, you know, there you, you got them. You have captured them. That is what that is why I always say stories are the most important part because they help you with that like, no trust factor. They help people like, no, and trust you so that they like you and they click your links and they swipe up and they buy your things. They That's become your people. people. They, become, they your... become your super fans. Your super fans. That's what they are. Like Pat and them knows to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to pause you here because I want to hear if you don't follow LaShawn, you should because she has amazing stuff. I find her Instagram stories <laughs> to be incredibly um, they're like my ASMR. I love listening to, I love her music. I love her whole aesthetic. I love her coffee, like it all. And it, it becomes routine for me to watch and listen and engage with her. So tell me, how do you make a great Instagram story and how do you decide? Because your aesthetic is so yours. It is yours so uniquely. How did you come to that? So when someone goes through stories, you want them to know it's yours. You know, you want them to be able to, cause I know I follow people where I, even before I look up and see whose story it is. I know, even if they're not in the frame because of the aesthetic, because of how it is, how it starts, how it goes. But the point, what makes a good Instagram story is that it's a story. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end, just like a story. So, you know, people always post like these one frames and then they leave. And I'm like, okay, that was boring. No one's going to come back to follow up to see what else went on. You know what I mean? They're going to yeah. tap through to the next person because uh, you're born. And then they, you will not show up the next time that they're on Instagram because, you know, they didn't follow through. Bloggers, you know, it's, we are all influencers. We are storytellers. We have to do the same thing on IG that we do on our blog. Tell a story. So that's what I always say. People always like, well, what do you post about? I'm like, your life. <laughs> I think my life is boring, but my coffee story is like, like, that's just, that's me. That's one thing that's mine. Um, I have a friend who posts coffee stories too, but hers are completely different than mine. And that's okay. So, you know, I watch hers because I think hers are funny. You know, she watches mine because mine are just different. And so you have to find something that is your own, something that keeps people coming back and go for it. Post it. <laughs> Yeah, post it and and trial and error is where that's going to happen, right? Like I'm sure yeah. you didn't wake up one morning and go, my coffee story it emerged fully formed no. from my brain. No, <laughs> so I always say everybody should have what I call content buckets. Um, you should have them for your feed and you should have them for stories, like things that you always that you pull from that you always post about. So for me, it's coffee, motherhood, um, work life balance, self care, or me time. So every time I post on Instagram, it's going to be about one of those things. I rarely deviate. Of course, I'll deviate for like important events like, you know, current events that pertain to my life. Of course. I will post about them. But for the most part, when you come to me, that you know that's going to be something that you're going to find. You're going to, I mean, you're going to talk about my son, some coffee, <laughs> how much work I got to do. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> you're going to see me on my Peloton first thing in the morning, something yes. like that. And so that is you have to start making yourself a routine. Just like you said, you want your you to be a part of their lives where you are part of their routine. So remember, beginning, a middle and an end, though, please. So in terms of the content buckets, are you, do you have like spreadsheets where you keep ideas for stuff that you know that were, cause in case you run out, like what do you ever just go? I, I mean, coffee is great because you're going to, you're going to drink that. That's going to be every morning. Every it's not, you're going to drink the coffee. So it's there. Yeah. But if for other content, are there other, like, do you ever have ideas? How do you do that? Okay. So most of the time I have, a, I have an editorial calendar for Instagram and not only for my feed, but I have one for stories. So okay. I basically know on a given day what type of content I'm going to post. Um, so I know if I talked about one piece of content a lot yesterday, I might not talk about it as much the next day. 
I have it spread out. <laughs> so right. I know I might not know exactly what's no, I'm lying. I know exactly what's gonna be posted <laughs> in general. Um some of it's live, some of it's you know, recorded, and some is just shared from other things that I've already found on Instagram. So it's a planning thing. And that makes my life easier too. So what do you use for your editorial calendar for Instagram? A calendar. <laughs> just a, okay, just, you just use a regular just a calendar. Basic, awesome. Just I a love basic it. Basic planner, a basic planner. So awesome. Because I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah, I just need a basic planner. It's whatever works. Okay, so Christine had a question. She said, I'm curious about LaShawn's thoughts on longer text and feed post. I know she's focusing on stories and reels, but I still love the feed. <laughs> so, I, Instagram is like microblogging these days. So, the longer, the thing about the longer posts on your feed is, are you saying anything interesting? Can are you keeping the are you keeping the user's attention? So I always say you all if you're going to have a long caption, you have to capture their attention in the first sentence, like when they're scrolling, when they see you know because it cuts off after thirty the minutes. Ellipses, yeah. yeah, you have to capture their attention with that first sentence. That's what I call a call to action. You know, you're telling them, you're asking them a question, you're telling them to do something, um, you're you're telling them to double tap, you're telling them to post an emoji of how you felt today, something in that first sentence that makes them want to stop the scroll. Otherwise, they're going to just keep going. And sometimes with the longer captions, it's better to put something at the beginning and at the end, because otherwise, they're going to get bored. <laughs> so unless they are loyal followers. Now, your super fans read everything. You know, but regular people, you've got to capture their attention. That and that makes that, that's a lot of sense. And you want to have, a, I'm sure, a balance that content. I want to talk more about balancing all of the different things out. But I also want to talk. We talked about the new Instagram, and let's talk about Reels. <laughs> let's bring it. Up. Oh, not a big fan, eh? <laughs> no, I I actually I actually like Reels. Um, this is Instagram's new baby. You know, because Instagram loves video. Let me repeat, they love video. Um, I always say, whenever Instagram introduces something new, you have to try it. You have to do it because whatever is new, that's what they're going to push. Um, and the main reason that you want to do reels right now is for the potential, the reach, the discovery, the engagement. The, it's crazy right now because reels, <clears throat> of course, are being prioritized um, in all the ways that people search for content on IG. Like, you can find when you open up the explore tab, it's the yep. first thing yep. there. It's the top piece of content that is on there. It's like they're trying to force you to do it. If they really want hashtag, you to like reels. Yes. If you do a hashtag search, it's there right at the top. If you do go to the real feed, reels have its own feed. I mean, yeah. come on. And yeah. even if you do an audio search, like if you tap on the song that somebody used, for real, it'll take you to an audio search where it will show you every reel that used that song. It is so many ways for Instagram has made it so that you can find reels. They want you to use reels. Um, and even today, they just updated it so that they're 30 seconds long instead of 15. And there's a 10 second timer instead of a three second timer. So, I mean, they real be here today. They want us to use them. They've gone all in. <laughs> yes, they have gone all in. <laughs> so now we have to. So that's my thing about reels. All right. So get, Larish asked a great question. She says, I'd love to hear tips on creating them, especially for people who did not or do not or refuse to do TikTok. So I don't, any reel that I create, I don't create in the app because I, it's clunky. And that's the, until they fix that a little bit more, I will not be creating in Instagram. Um, so I usually, what I usually do is, it, even like when I did my um, 15 seconds of summer, because that was like the perfect way to do uh -huh. real. I just recorded little scenes every day, all day. So like five seconds here, five seconds there, you know, and then you can stitch them together in an app. I use InShot. <laughs> so it helps me to stitch together my reels. And then I take the reel into Instagram and add the music. Why? Because when you use it, it's just like TikTok in that regard, is when you add the music in the app, it will boost you in the algorithm more than if you use your own music. So my quiet kitchen, good question. 
Ugh, reels. What is it and what should we put in them? <laughs> I mean, fair enough. Oh, they can be anything. They can be fun. They can be, I've seen reels where they're um, like, what do they call it? Like educational. Like there are people who do like quick little cooking videos, cooking reels. There are people who do um, quick informational, like there's one girl, she, she talks about IG a lot. She does like little informational reels. There are people who do funny reels. There are people who just do the snap reel where, you know, they're changing clothes. They are basic. <laughs> Don't overthink it. You can sit there and just snap, snap, snap and change clothes if you're just, if you're a fashion blogger. You can sit up there and do a quick, this is how you boil an egg. You know, simple things. It's like quick bites of content. That's it. And now they're 30 seconds long, so you can get a little bit more of content in them. 15 seconds was kind of hard. But 30 seconds, you can definitely get more into them. Love that. Okay. Just, just, just don't, don't, don't think too hard. Just do it. Just jump in. Jump in. Make a reel. Do it today. <laughs> um, engagement. Let's talk about that. All right. Like, so. what, what you Because that you said likes are different. So what are we looking at if we're not looking at likes as much? So say and shares are the new likes on the ground, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. So why? Because it gets your content in front of more people. Um, it makes people physically interact with your post, which is important because when people physically do something to your post, like comment, like, or share it, or save it, Instagram's like, oh, they're on the app longer. Remember, that's what Instagram wants. Um, that, that's, that's all they want. Um, so remember, engagement is down right now, um, which is a question which a question I always get for people, but I always have to remind people, especially right now, you have to look at what else is going on in the world. People are tired. Um, this is not going to be, this. Instagram is always like this, it goes in cycles. And really in September, it's always down, mainly because people, kids are going back to school. Parents are trying to get back into their rhythm. And with the way the world is right now, you know, we, we got virtual school over here. You got people trying to do Zooms all day. You, you got to manage everything. And people mm -hmm. are tired of being online. Yeah. So it's not us. It's them. <laughs> so, but this too shall pass, as, as it always does. So I always say, keep doing what you're doing. Because when people come back in full force, you want Instagram to still know you're there. Because if you stop just because you're like, oh, ain't nobody watching anyway. Then when people come back, you're behind. So I always say keep going. And a lot of and one more thing that I have yeah. to say. Please. One reason why engagement is down for a lot of people, especially a lot of influencers, is because you didn't pivot during COVID. You did not pivot. People are at home and you were still posting these aspirational, I'm going um, on this fabulous trip. Look at this fabulous trip I went to last year. Don't nobody care no more. <laughs> That's the thing. Now it's all about relatable content. How can they relate to you? You can have relatable aspirational content, but you have to spin it that way. Just continuing to post your fashion post just and with no context. You know, not saying this is my outfit for Zoom today instead of saying, oh, look at me at this cute sale I went to at Target. You know, some people lost their job. They, they don't have money. You know what I mean? You have yeah. to know you have to know your audience. If your audience is not responding to your content, most likely there is a reason and you are it. So you have to learn to pivot and see what do they want? What do they want from me now? And find out. You can do that simply as just like hold your audience. They will tell you. They people have no shame. They want to give their opinion. So that's just that's my soapbox that I'll, I'll get off. I think it's a great, so it's, it's a good soapbox to be on. And as you were saying, like we, we've been in here for six months. Like we, there it's, you don't know what people want. And like you said, if you don't know, ask it's why not, ask. Why not just ask? ask Instagram has those lovely polls and question boxes. And then when people type, like, you can just push the button. Yes. And when, when people um, comment and like, and, and, and use your polls and everything that gives you engagement. So I'm always like, come on people. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> so Quiet Kitchen said, perfect. Love that explanation with regard to reels. Uh, Carly Anderson says, yes, the pivot. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Sally says, I love LaShawn. Larisha says, keeping <laughs> up with trends, pivoting literally helps so much. So smart. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to follow up. When you were talking about shares and saves being the next, the new likes. Um, mm -hmm. Love that. 
what have you seen with the type of content that in, encourages those saves, encourages those shares? So um, things like educational content, like if you're educating somebody, memes. Right now, mm. memes are memes are hot. Memes <laughs> are hot. Way to put it. I, I, you, people I mean, give will me, share give me memes, give me gifts and give me carbs, and I'm yes. done for the rest of my life. People, people will share a meme. People will share a good infographic. Um, people will share though a good carousel post that educates. You know, that's why everyone. I always say every once in a while. Like I, I have like a, a what I call an Instagram mastermind, <laughs> and we always say every once in a while you need to share one of those posts that make people click and say, you know, to just just that's something you need to start incorporating into your strategy. Either it's a joke, it's a it's a recipe. Oh, you can say save this recipe, you know, for later, or you can uh, a graphic or a craft, anything tell them to save it so that they can. Very smart. Love it. And and just as simple as telling them to save it. Yeah. I'm sure it makes a huge difference as opposed <laughs> to say, thinking that people say, do know that they should. Right. No, you have to tell people what to do. <laughs> this is just a fact. Always. Always. <laughs> um, we're getting lots of inform informative carousels right now. Uh, yes. Sally, Sally says, Lashawn has helped me with my Instagram account. She knows what she's talking about. That's I love Sally. You know, she's a smart cookie. My Quiet Kitchen says that you guys have done this brilliantly. Thank you. I don't know if that was for LaShawn or Mediavine, but either way, we'll both take it and we love it. <laughs> um, okay. So how do you balance all those different forms of content out? How do you take stories, reels, and your feed and get a, a, a cohesive Instagram strategy that works for you? So like I mentioned earlier, I have a content calendar. I plan, I literally every Sunday, I plan out my week. I don't, I don't, I not only plan out like what I'm going to post on my blog, I plan out what I'm going to post on Instagram and I can always tell the week when I'm successful. <laughs> so like last week I was not successful this week. I'm doing a little bit better, but it's like you plan, if you plan stuff out, you can, it's easier to remain consistent. Um, so just like I said, I have the content buckets. I know I plan my Instagram within an inch of its life. I know what I'm going to post on stories. Sometimes I, I do what I call, I say, be, be a part of that pre-record life. I will pre-record stuff and I have a, I have folders on my, on my phone that say for Instagram. I have folders that say for Instagram stories. Even in Instagram, if I see a meme or if I see a post that I know I'm going to share sooner or later, I save it to a folder called to share two stories just so that I already have that content ready, pulled up, and I can just share it and keep it moving. If I'm going to do a post, I already write out that caption beforehand. I've already picked my hashtag. I do this for the week. That way I'm not scrambling at the last minute trying to say, oh, I need to post. What am I going to post? I, I don't have any of that. I have a friend who posts a, who plans a month ahead. I'm not like that. But it's this concept is the same. <laughs> um, like I said, choose your content buckets. I'm always about to pre-record life, pre-write your IG captions. And my favorite tip is don't go on Instagram. So all day people people are always like, Well, what do you mean? You're always responding to your stories and everything. I'm like, I'm responding from Facebook. I am not on the actual app because the app is a time suck. I will start scrolling and watching people's stories. But on Facebook, all I, I can just see when people respond. And I will, I'm on there, so I might, I have specific times where I can go on Facebook anyway, just like Instagram. And so then I will respond to all my comments and then keep it moving. But I'm not on the app. I spend about no more than two hours a day on that app, if that, on a good day. So that's on a busy day. I have time limits because otherwise I will. I got too much else, too much other things to do. I can't, I can't be on Instagram, and I've learned that that is the only way to have a life. And so I, I love to. No, it's so smart. It's it's hard. So uh, Larissa <laughs> says it's exhausting, but it's worth it. Chanel says dedicated to the craft. I love it. Uh, Suzanne says this is gold. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Jennifer says I do the story share folder. Um, mm -hmm. um, that folder to share within the phone is brilliant. Brenda says that is so smart to say things to share in stories later. I feel like I'll see things in bunches and then some days not so much. So it's a good idea to exactly. save it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, Jennifer, Jennifer says, how can you respond on Facebook? I think I broke something. <laughs> you responded. I don't know. Oh, oh, you mean on, on Instagram. Oh, so you can either do it in creator, Facebook creator account, or um, mine is connected to my alerts. I think you have to let, you have to agree to it. Um, so when I go on Instagram, I see the alerts for IG as well as um, the regular. So sometimes, I mean, my my inbox is busy because I do respond a lot to my people. And I, I, I purposely create content that makes them want to respond because yeah. the algorithm likes you that way. So it takes me... Um, it takes me a while, so I see a lot of <laughs> responses. But it's it's I every like I have a set time, like it's a timer. I only let myself stay on for like ten minutes, answering those questions real quick, and then I get off. The only time I'm really on Instagram is early in the morning, um, and in the evening. Like most time, I post a post in the evening, so that's usually when I'm on, or I post one early in the morning. And usually for stories, I go on briefly and post something because I already have it ready <clears throat> or either I'm getting ready to record it right then and it's going on. So that's all. Love. Now, are you using, so Jennifer's saying Facebook creator, she'll look for that on desktop. Are you using on it or is on, it on desktop or there's also an app. If you just want to go on and look at just, um, just your responses on stories, Facebook threads app, actually okay. will let you do that. It And the thing about Threads app is you can record stories in there. And you know how they're, we always tell you to um, caption your stories. It will caption them for you. So Ooh. yeah, just something to think about. <laughs> That's not, okay. So you said you, you don't personally scroll. You're not on there for longer than two hours a day. You're using Facebook to keep you from going down the rabbit hole. How much mm -hmm. actual content are you posting via all these different places a day? Like what's it, what's an average for you? Um, I don't post on my feed every day. My feed is maybe every other day. Um, okay. But on Instagram stories, remember they have a beginning, a middle and an end. So right. that's at least three frames for me. Got it. Um, so I usually post a group in the morning, mm -hmm. in the early morning. I post a group mid morning around 10 ish, 11 ish. I post again around 11 or one ish, something like that. Usually I put a transitional post in between. Um, that's usually one of those memes or, or posts that, I've, that I'm sharing that I call them transitional posts. And then I'll post something around dinner time and maybe in the evening. So maybe four times a day, um, but that, that's by design because it keeps me constantly in the little, you know, when they first come on, I'm there. It's something new for them to see. So that's what I do. Very smart. Okay. Question for you from Jenny Fielding. What should travel mm -hmm. influencers be posting while we can't travel? My niche is cruise travel. So I'm very wary of posting irrelevant content that's not about cruising. Should I be? Yes. <laughs> so unless you're posting about like how you are cruising during COVID and no one is cruising during COVID right now. If it were an option, please go. Right. This is where you have to have the pivot. You either have to start talking about other aspects of travel and what you can do now, because that still keeps you in a niche, but it's a broader niche. And this is also a time for you to branch out. I always say this, this whole year has forced all of us to find another content bucket. So now it's time for you to pivot and find another content bucket. That, that's the only way you're going to stay relevant, because like you said, no one is cruising right now. I mean, when we start cruising again, maybe then you can be like, yes, so this is probably true with COVID. But right now, no, I mean, no. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, totally. OK, so uh, Jennifer says I can type faster on my computer. This will save me so much time. You may have changed my life. <laughs> um, Christine Post said again, what's the app that captions stories, story videos? It's called Threads, T-H-R-E-A-D-S. You know, threads, just like threads. And it's like a, it looks like a little Instagram box with a circle in it, like a video. Just, just look Love at that it. one. Yeah. Brenda says, <laughs> I just go to my Instagram account directly on my desktop and reply to things there. It's much easier for me to yes. avoid the time suck on my phone. See, because we don't have time to have time sucks anymore. So at least I know I don't. So 
that is the way to get it done and still be, you know, respond to your people because they need responses. You know, we're not Beyonce. We must respond to our comments. Sure. You know, so, you know, that's a good way to do it and still save yourself time. Oh, it's such a crying shame that we're not Beyonce. <laughs> I didn't want our money, but moving on. <laughs> I mean the the yeah, it's the it's the the woe of my life. Yeah, but I, somebody yeah, yeah, somebody yeah. respond to my Instagram comments. The peasants need to be responded to. Um, okay, Jenny Fielding says also would love to know how much time we should spend engaging on other people's content and how important is that as a, as a part of your Instagram strategy to growth. So you have to use Instagram like a like a regular person. You know, posting and ghosting does not work. Um, so I have those, you know, when you can, those folders on, on Instagram, where you can save things every day. I have a different folder, a group of people in those folders where I go to their content every day and I make sure that I like, and I comment on those people. Now, some of those people are like what I call my super fans, the people who always comment on my stuff. I may not follow them, but I try to at least once a week go in and comment on their stuff. Um, some of my friends are in that folder because like I'm not on Instagram all the time, so I might miss their posts. Um, so that is the way I keep up in general. And then like in the morning and the evening when I have what I call free time on Instagram, right. that's when I just scroll and like. That's when I go on the explore feed and I see what's going on on there. That's when I, you know, I'll just go through and if I see an interesting comment, I might go to that person's feed and look I'm like, oh, that's nice. But it's constantly using the app like a real person. You still have to do that. Just set aside 15 minutes, set a timer, go for it. <laughs> and we had heard earlier this summer that um, that you have to, if you're using your business account, if you're using your, your branded account, you need to be strategic about what it is that you are liking and following because you're teaching the algorithm that entire time. So if I'm you like- sure are. <laughs> If I'm, a, if I'm a vegan blogger and I'm like a closet and I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't think anyone out there is like, but, and I'm like a closet, like bacon person. And I go yes. love all the bacon accounts in, in, yes. the, in the dark of night since when no one is there that they know. Right. Yes. That is why I have a, I have a whole separate private account where I follow a whole bunch of stuff on there that I would never follow on my regular page. That account is ratchet. But, you know, <laughs> that is like my my follow all the things that, you know, don't have anything to do with my brand, you know, person. So that is saying people are like, oh, you didn't follow me back. I'm like, no, I didn't. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's not personal. It's just not. I might follow you on my personal account, but not on that one. So, yeah, you have to be strategic, strategic about that. I love that. Larisha says, uh, I'd love to hear LaShawn discuss any tips on diversifying content between real stories, feed and IGTV. We have not hit on IGTV yet. Diversify how? So, I mean, are you mean like what type of content? I think she's saying, like, I, and I asked this a little bit earlier, like how much are you focusing? You said you post on your feed every other day, usually mm -hmm. so That's me. three feed <laughs> posts a week, roughly. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you're doing about, you're doing three, four bursts of three stories a piece a day. So mm -hmm. how much of that is reels? And then do you do IGTV? IGTV, oh, I hate IGTV. And I'm not even gonna <laughs> lie. <laughs> I do do it every once in a while though, because Instagram still likes it. So I, and, and I always say it depends on what your brand is. Like Larissa, you do food, right? So I would say for you, especially IGTV should be big. You should be making food videos. You should be making quick little food reels. You should be posting, you know, your food, you know, in stories, you know, shopping in COVID times, you know, how to, because you guys are vegan or vegetarian now. I can't remember. But it, you know, things like that is what you should be doing. You, 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 you can spread it out little bites size pieces of content everywhere you don't have to do it every day because that's just that's just too much none of us are super like that unless you plan ahead um but i would say at least once a week you need to use one of instagram's favorite things you know real stories igtv you need to use them so. and i think that's what she she just clarified in her question she said how okay. you keep up with it all basically and that yes you said at least once a week is a yes. good thing yourself to go and try one 
even if you don't like it, try one of right. their and things. That's a, and that's another thing that has to do with planning. If you plan it out, you can. it's easier to keep up. So if you plan the beginning of the week, you know you need a reel. You know you need an IGTV. You know, you can split some of your, your IGTV and make a reel out of it. You know what I mean? You can post your reel to your feed, and that is a feed post. You have to be strategic and also save yourself time. But plan, plan, plan it out. <laughs> plan is planning is so important in your and however you choose to plan. Yes. She's a planner of her own, just a, a paper planner, which I love. Is that a fancy paper planner or is it just no? It's a basic one from Dollar Tree, and it, it. it's just for Instagram. I wish I had it with me, but I don't. But it's just for Instagram. It's just a basic, and it has um. It has like the weekly one when you once you put and I use that for stories. Yeah, but it's basic. I love that. Basic. Uh, <laughs> Tiffany says, "Hi, Lashawn. When you say you share your favorites to folders, this is actually an Instagram." And Jennifer said, "Yes, Tiffany. You when you click save, there's an option to put it in create a folder. So, how many folders do you have? Do you use those a lot?" <laughs> she is embarrassed about yeah. her folders. Well, I've uncovered I'm a secret. Not, okay, I have over thirty folders. Okay, I, I'm not wow. going to Wow. <laughs> Because I have different, different, because sometimes I'll, I'll save accounts um, because I'm, for some of my clients, I'm interested in say, showing them something from them. Or sometimes I just, I have categories of people. Um, sometimes I'm doing research. So I have, I have folders for everything. I use those folders. <laughs> so you mentioned clients. Tell us a little bit more about what you mean by clients. So I do Instagram strategy reports. Um, where it's like a one-on-one -on -one with me where I deep dive into your Instagram. Like I, I basically tear it apart and I tell you what you should be posting, what you're doing wrong, what you could do to improve. I give you a whole plan. Basically, I, t I those content buckets, I, I tell you what they should be, what I think they should be. Yeah. Um, I help you with stories, reels now, um, I do TV ideas, plan. I give you homework. Um, and we do it with a Zoom call too. So it's it's like a whole thing. <laughs> yes, so, there are yeah. all sorts of things that you have. You do the one, you do the one-on-one -on -one consultations. You also have, um, and you have an Instagram book. You have a book that you have to offer that we're going to actually yes. share all the things there. So tell us, and this isn't something that we, we talked about yet, but hashtags on Instagram. Oh, hashtags. I hate hashtags. Right now, hashtags are not doing what they're usually doing. Okay. Um, Fair enough. We are, Instagram is tweaking something, I do believe. Um, but hashtags always say are the keywords of Instagram. They help okay. Instagram group us into categories and things like that. Um, so it's, it's good to use hashtags to help people find you. Um, they're like exposure. You're not necessarily going to get a follow from it like you used to. But you might not even get a like from it because you know people scroll. Exactly. But you will, but you will get that impression. You will get that reach from the hashtag. So that is something to consider. Um, I always say you you can get banned, shadow banned. They want to say um, for spammy behavior with hashtags like using too many, using the same ones over and over again, using what they actually have as banned hashtags. Um, so always with your hashtag strategy, be careful. Lately, I'm trying to use less hashtags okay. um, simply because I want to train Instagram to recognize my posts without so many of them. So that's just my new thing right now that I'm trying. Give us some so. numbers. Give us a ballpark on what is too many or what is uh, less than what? I'd say 10 is okay. a good number to okay. use. Anything over that, you are, um, I mean, you can use them, but it's, it's more about the combination of hashtags. And are you using hashtags that are too big? Because, you know, some of them are huge. You're not going to get seen unless you too are huge. Um, I always say the smaller ones, like the 50K to 100K, though in that range, those are community-like. So people are in those actually looking for stuff. Anything under 50K, you run the risk of not that many people being in it and not that many people using it. So that is a thought. 
It's a lot but, like uh, it's it's a lot like keyword research and SEO. Like you're like you said, they're the keywords of Instagram. You're looking for the yeah. low hanging fruit that you can actually make an impact yes. on, as opposed to yes, identify exactly say out of the of, yes. of this hashtag. So instead of saying right, instead of saying food, which has millions of searches, right? You know, even right. instead of saying vegan, you might want to say vegan casserole. You know what I mean? Something yes. like that. Break it, niche it down when you think about hashtags. I love that. And we put this in the comments. We're going to get back to your questions here in a second. But if you go to some of what any of LaShawn's great stuff from the Instagram one on one strategy sessions to her book, and she's also got a stories courses in there, you get 10% off. You get that discount with the code MEDIAVINE, all caps. Um, that's in there. How long is that good for, LaShawn? How long will you let people use that? Oh, it's, it's, you can use it in infinity right now. Infinity. <laughs> And a code. Uh, so, so go over and check out everything she has to offer if you need more, because um, I certainly need more. I'm very interested to hear about her stories course. Okay, Larisha said, uh, since you aren't a huge fan of IGTV, I'm curious if you will pivoting to pivot to doing more of them now that Instagram is an alpha testing of ad revenue of Instagram TV and actually wanted to get yes. into this. Larissa mentioned it. Ads are becoming yes. a thing. Yes, yes, Instagram. of course. Even more. So that's why I always say, I always add one eventually. Like I, I don't, I hate them, but I will do one because I know that eventually they're going to add add to them and I want the content there when they do. So I, let me see, I did one maybe a week or two ago. So I try to do one at least every couple of weeks or at least once a month. Right now it's been once a month. I'm not going to lie. So, <laughs> but as, the holidays come, I'm like, I need to, there are more opportunities to do IGT, so to do them. I used to do them a lot last year, um, but things were different this year, so I didn't do them as much. So that is something I need to get back to. But yes, I do always tell people in my strategy, don't do as I say, not as I do. Do more IGTV because they're going to have ads. We're also hearing that um, there's a rumor going around out there that uh, the Instagram algorithm favors ads. What are some better resources to understand how how ads are working on Instagram and if they should become a part of your strategy? It's like, well, let's say Mark owns Instagram like he owns Facebook. And, you know, Facebook is pay to play now. It really is. Um, Instagram, I believe, will be head is heading that way. I bet a little slower than instant Facebook got there. Facebook just one day we were fine and then one day it was like, bam. Instagram yep. is taking its time getting there, um, mainly because no one is taking the bait. <laughs> like big brands are, but in influencers, we are not taking the bait yet. Um, it is a way, if you do it right, to get your content in front of more people by boosting and things like that. But once you do it once, just like Facebook, you have to keep doing it. So just something to think about. It's like when you That's shave your I legs, know. you can't go back. Yes, you can't go back. I mean, you, you should. You just prickly. You, you color your hair. You got to keep going. You know? I, well, you don't. I love, I love, you now, yeah, now. You should see all this. My, moving on. Everyone's like, I love that choice you made. I'm like, it was a real great choice, wasn't it? Not a choice. All yeah, right. This is life. Yeah. This, this is the way it is. And I'm here now. And so Brenda, said, I started using hashtags a bit more intentionally a couple months ago, and it has been slowly helping me grow my account. Slow and steady, but it's working for me for organic growth because my account is small. Yeah. And that's the thing about Instagram now. We cannot expect the monster's growth that it used to be even two, three years ago. Everything is slow and steady on Instagram now. So you cannot judge your growth by one post or even you say oh i posted every day for a week and nothing happened so no you got to do it consistently over a longer period of time i will say though reels if you really right now if you want to really grow do a reel every day watch them come in love that all right so we are unfortunately about out of time which i dislike because this has been an awesome hour and Aww. so much to learn but uh, i'm going to make a, an announcement real quick but before i i'm going to give you the final question which i want to know what accounts do you follow that are inspirational for you in terms of learning either a about instagram or just learning about beautiful 
how to create beautiful posts. So it can be straight up knowledge for Instagram, or it can be um, your favorite accounts to follow just to, to look at beautiful stuff and to talk about the anatomy of a great post. Guys, the next episode of Teal Talk, we, do, we are uh, not on next week, but we are back in October, Thursday, October 8th at 3 p.m. Eastern time. I have Daniela Flores of I Like to Dabble, Dabble and Chanel Acevedo of Brooklyn Active Mama. We are talking about living your best graphic design life with Canva. We're going to get into branding. We're going to get into organization. We're going to get into, obviously, social media templates and how to create the things you want for that. But um, take it beyond that and how to really organize what you have on Canva and use some of their new tools that are out and how to maximize those for content creators. So that is October 8th. Don't miss it. If you are a fan of our show, and I certainly hope you are, um, you want to see more of this great content from people like LaShawn and Chanel and Daniela, please like us on Facebook, uh, Media Vine. Go to our YouTube. That's where all of the episodes go when they're done. They're edited and they're on our YouTube channel forever. And they're also always still available on Facebook. So we want you to watch these. Um, we're not going to hide them from you. Promise you that. LaShawn, tell us about those Instagram uh, accounts that we have to go follow right now. Okay. Um, first one is Cook a Monster. Um, um, Kay is, uh, she's not even, um, she's not, she's a photographer. And normally I would not follow her because she does a lot of fashion posts, but her stories are excellent. They are marvelous. They they are beautiful, they are creative, and I spent a lot of time stealing her filters and things like that because she is truly awesome and a creative, and I'll, it's very um, inspirational for That's me awesome. for her. Um, Shav um, Shavonda um, S Gardner style. She is a um, what do they call it home decorator account, mm, a DIYer. Yeah, DIY. Um, her home is beautiful. She lives in Sacramento. Um, yeah. But what I like about her account is the engagement. How her she has a actual community, um, and the way like if you look at her stories and if you look even her posts, the way she interacts with her audience, I love that. And so I'm always following her for you know tips and things like that. Um, Style fit fatty does an excellent job of the share and save type post. Yes. Um, excellent job with it. And you, you don't even realize that's what she's doing to you. <laughs> unless Which you're is like, the best me, you're like, it, right. Unless you're like an Instagram nerd and then you're like, Oh, I see what she did there. Like but it's Satan. very subtle and her aesthetic is beautiful. Her family is beautiful. And you're just like, Oh, I just like her. I want to like her post. A S E K Y B. Um, and she, she just has a pretty account. When you say you want, everybody's like, well, what does the cohesive account look like? That, that is what it looks like. It's just her family, you know, and they're cute. You know, she has the cutest kids, but they all, it flows together. Everything she does flows from the filter she uses, the content. So I'm always like, do that, do that, do that. Um, uh, Jennifer who is on here, <laughs> Jennifer Bourget. Um, just because her, it's, it's a, once again, it's one of those pretty cohesive accounts. And then even in her stories, the way it all, like her stories and her feed usually flows together. I so like that's that. always, always say that's a good thing to do. Um, for Instagram, there are not a lot of really good accounts on it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Some of them uh, don't always do the right thing. <laughs> so, um, but there is one. Um, uh, what is her name? Natasha. Uh, Soul Studio Marketing. And okay. follow her. You, you all should follow her right now because she's doing a 30 day reels challenge. Um, and she's teaching about reels as she learns about it. Oh, so I've been, find, I've been finding that fascinating. And I think she's going to have a real course at the end of the 30 days. So if you're interested in that, that that's the type of thing she might be um, might be interested in. I do like her, though. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> and 
follow LaShawn, obviously, at Everyday Eye Candy. <laughs> oh, Go yeah, there. Me. Yeah, follow her. Love it. Coffee stories. Can't get enough. And definitely <laughs> use the code MEDIAVINE, all caps, to get 10% off all of her excellent Instagram help and trainings. And if you really feel like you just need a deep dive, she's there. She's available. LaShawn, it's been so good to have you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You've been a delight. Okay, everybody, we'll see you in two weeks. Have a wonderful, go out and get a pumpkin spice latte something and enjoy the season. Bye, you guys. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.